Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Whether you are brand new to using Canva or you've already been using it for years, I would be willing to bet there are some hidden features you had no idea that existed, but they're total game changers for teachers. What are we doing? What's the game? I want in. So in today's video, I am going to share five of my favorite Canva hacks that will not only make your life easier as a teacher, but also allow you to make content more engaging for your students. We're gonna kick it off with hack number one, magic shortcuts. These are some fun little things you can incorporate when you are presenting slides to students. In order to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna open up a random template that's already available in Canva. So I'm gonna search angles and I'm going to filter it to show me just presentations and we'll use this one. I'm gonna click customize this template it's gonna save an editable copy to my Canva account. And let's go ahead and apply all 13 pages just so I have some things to work with. From here, I'm going to present the slides. So I'm gonna click the present full screen button down at the bottom. And now I am able to utilize these magic shortcuts. The first one being timers. If you click any number on your keyboard between zero and nine, it will automatically display a timer for that length of time. So for example, if I click five, it's gonna show me a five minute timer. If I click three, it's gonna show me a three minute timer. From here, you can still adjust it. So you can add or subtract a minute using these buttons here. If you need a specific number of seconds, so maybe I want three minutes and 30 seconds, you can click where the seconds are, type in the specific amount you want, and it is fully customizable. You can click play to start the timer and it will have this little countdown circle that starts to move around. You can pause it. You can also reset the timer and you can adjust the sound up top. If you want to get rid of the timer, you can either click the minimize button and it will disappear or on my keyboard, if I click a number such as five, it's gonna pop that timer up, but I can click five again in order to make the timer disappear. Then there are some really fun little animations that you can have displayed on your slides using these keyboard shortcuts. The first one, one of my favorites is confetti, cause who doesn't love confetti? On my keyboard, I'm just gonna click C and you will see the confetti pop on the screen and there are also sound effects, which of course you don't have to use. You can turn your sound off if you don't want them. But a few of my other favorites include the mic drop, which if I click M, it shows me that mic drop animation. There also is a drum roll if you click D. There are bubbles if you click O, which I know it's a little bit of kind of a anomaly because it doesn't have the letter B, but if you think about it, bubbles are shaped like the letter O. I'll be honest, I'm not exactly sure how or why you would use that one, but I'm sure y'all have some creative ideas. If you do, leave a comment down below. Let's say your students are working and you need them to be a little bit quieter or get their attention. You can click Q to get the quiet sign. And you can also use magic shortcuts in order to kind of hide some of your information. I'm better at hiding than they are at vision. So for example, if I'm advancing to the next slide, but maybe I don't wanna show it to them yet, I can click B in order to blur the content. And I can click B again to unblur it. Or if I have blurred a slide like this and I advance to the next slide, it will automatically unblur. You can also click U in order to get a curtain that's gonna cover the slide. And whenever you are ready to like reveal it, you can click U again. And it will unveil the slide underneath. 
Now, I will have these all listed for you in the description box, so feel free to take a screenshot or a picture of it so you have it to reference. But at any time, if you forget, you also have a reference within Canva's present mode. So if I bring my mouse down to the bottom, I'm gonna get this little bar. I can click the keyboard. That's gonna show me those magic shortcuts. And then I can click it again in order to get rid of it. Hack number two is the remote controller. This is gonna allow me to control my slides from my phone or a tablet. So in order to access the remote controller, once again, I'm gonna come down to the bottom in order to get this bar. I'm gonna click the three dots, which is the more button and I'm gonna click share remote control. It may take a second or two, but it will say available and give me a QR code or a link. I can either scan the QR code with my phone's camera or I could copy and paste the link onto another device, but I'm gonna show you how this works with my phone. Now I do recommend already having the Canva app downloaded, but you're gonna open up the camera on your phone, go ahead and scan the QR code, open up that link, it's gonna open the Canva app. And from here, you have a virtual remote controller. So you can advance slides. I can click and advance the slides and it is controlling it on my computer. I can go forward or backward, but I can also use those magic shortcuts, which I think is very helpful. So if I click magic shortcuts, I could do the confetti. Or I could do the drum roll. And this is a really convenient way to use those magic shortcuts while presenting. Even though I love using wireless presenters, which are just little remote controls that will allow you to control slides, I wouldn't be able to use those magic shortcuts as I move around the room, but if I use the remote controller and connect to my phone, I have access to those magic shortcuts. Hack number three is editing a PDF. Canva will allow you to upload a PDF and then go in and manipulate it and edit it. So I'm gonna show you how this works with an example. Let's say I had a PDF of a math homework sheet I had given to my students. Within Canva, I'm back on the homepage. I'm gonna click upload, and then I'm gonna go ahead and choose the file. I'm gonna to go to my downloads and choose math homework open. It will take a second in order to upload to my Canva, but from here I can now click and open up this design. Even though it was a PDF, now I'm able to go in and manipulate these text boxes. And you will notice it's not perfect. Depending on the fonts that were in the PDF, there may be some things that are not an exact match, but for the most part, it does a good job. So for example, where it says math homework, it's not completely centered in the black bar, but I can just click and drag in order to kind of move it around where I want it to go. But I can now come in and edit any of these text boxes. So I could change February to September, and I could do September 1st to, oh, let's go all caps, to the fifth, and I can edit those text boxes. I can also delete any elements I don't need. So maybe I don't need the name box up here. I can get rid of that, or I could add additional elements. So I could add an image. Let's go to, maybe I'm doing some angles, and I want like a protractor. I could add in that photo onto the slide. So this is really helpful if you only have the PDF version of a file and it's not editable, but you need to make some changes. Once you have made any changes that you want to make, you can then re-export it as a PDF or even as an image just by going to share, coming to download, and then choosing the file type. So for example, I could choose PDF print and I can download it. And now if I go into my downloads, I have both versions of that file. So I had that original math homework sheet, but I also have the new one where I made changes. Now keep in mind, there are a few caveats to this. 
For example, the max file size is 100 megabytes and the max number of pages in the PDF is limited to 300. Also, if the original file was a scanned document, you're not gonna be able to go in and edit the individual text boxes because it's taking that scanned file as a full image. It has to be a PDF that was saved from a file like a Google Slides or a document, Word, something like that where there were actual text boxes. If it is a scanned file, you can always go in and cover things up. Like you could add a white rectangle to cover up previous text, but it's not going to be perfect and you're not gonna be able to go in and manipulate those individual text boxes. Hack number four is AI or artificial intelligence integration. And there are a few ways that AI is actually integrated into Canva. I'm gonna show you two different ways, but there are some more features that are coming because Canva is constantly expanding. The first one is called Magic Write, which is almost like ChatGPT built into Canva. So you can use this within docs or presentations, and I'm gonna show you how it works in each one. I'm gonna go ahead and create just a blank presentation. So I'm gonna click create a design, choose presentation. Within the presentation, I need to open up the Canva Assistant. So I'm gonna click this little circle down here that has the little sparklies on it, and I can type in, or you may see it under recommended, magic, and then you should see magic right. Once you click that, you can go ahead and type in your prompt. So maybe I'm using this presentation to design a permission slip. I could write, write a permission slip for a fourth grade field trip to the Museum of Natural History. Click generate. It will take a few seconds, but it's gonna give you an outline. Of course, you can go in and actually edit this and make any changes as needed, but it at least gives you a starting point. Similarly, you can access this within a doc. So I'm gonna go back to home, and this time under create a design, I'm gonna choose doc. From here, I can actually click that plus sign and once again, I can type in magic or you may already see it recommended to you. Select magic right and you can type in that prompt. So for example, create a list of fall writing prompts for fourth grade students. Click generate and it will go ahead and type out that text. Once again, I can go in, edit it, manipulate it, but it at least gives me some ideas. So this is a really handy feature for brainstorming or just trying to come up with some new ideas in order to save yourself a little bit of brain power. It keeps the brain moving and uh, spinning brain is a working brain. The other form of AI is called magic design, but that is only available within the presentations, not the docs. So in order to model this for you, I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna once again create a presentation. I'm gonna click on that Canva Assistant, but this time I'm gonna select Magic Design. It's going to automatically generate a slideshow based on the prompt I give it. So this is really helpful as a starting base if you're trying to create lesson slides. I find it really handy for things that maybe you don't know a lot about. I know when I taught fourth grade social studies, it was all about the history of Maryland and there was a lot I had to teach myself before I taught my students. So for example, I might type the Battle of Baltimore in the War of 1812. I can click enter and it's gonna automatically create a presentation with not only designs, but also information for me. I will say, sometimes they're not the best and you definitely gotta check it for accuracy, but once again, it gives you a starting point. So from these different options, maybe I really like this one. Ooh, the Battle of Baltimore, a turning point in American history. That's intriguing. From here, I have slides with some background information, some images, but I can customize it. So if this is the one I wanna go with, I can click create my presentation. It's going to insert those slides in for me. And from here, I can make any changes. So I can change out images, change the text, add in additional slides. But once again, it's a starting point. I will say these are both in beta mode, so they are constantly making improvements, and I definitely see this getting even better in the future. And one other little thing I wanted to show you, there are some AI apps built into Canva. So within my presentation, if I click on apps, and then I search, 
and actually it's featured right here, I can click on avatars and it will give me like a virtual presenter who will present my slides for me. So I can click open. From here, I can choose my presenter. So I could use this lady right here. I can type in a script and they will automatically read it for me. So play around because there are tons of options available. Hack number five is the tidy up feature. Now, let me just say, this one is not revolutionary, but if you don't know about it, it can be a big time saver. I'm gonna stay within this presentation, but just add in a blank slide. Let's say I am adding in some shapes or text boxes. It could be anything. And I'm wanting them to all kind of be in a line. So I'm just gonna kind of click and drag, but like they're kind of all over the place. You know, they're not super aligned. I can use the tidy up feature to automatically put them where I want them to go. So I can click and drag in order to select all of those, click position. And from here, I can choose tidy up and it will put them all in line. They're perfectly spaced out, nice and orderly. So this is a super handy feature if you're trying to keep things nice and lined up on your slides. Similarly, with that position sidebar opened, you can also use it to align things within the slide. So for example, if I want this square to be in the middle of the page, I can click middle, it will automatically go there. I can also align it from left to right. So I could click center or left or right, and it will move it around. That is it. Those are five of my favorite Canva hacks. I think every teacher should know but I was just scratching the surface. So if you enjoyed this video and you want more like it, leave a comment down below, let me know, and I could definitely create more in the future. If you found this video helpful and you learned something new, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.